Welcome back. We're here in a home built in the early 1900s with historic preservationist Bob Yap. And we're down in the basement of the home taking a look at the mechanicals that heat the home. And Bob, many people that buy older homes come into the older house. We don't have one here, but might see an old octopus and say, I got to get a newer updated system. Oh, is, is, that, is, that a, is that the right idea? Yeah, they freak out. Big gigantic yeah. ducks and all this. But in fact, it's a gravity furnace that was coal fed originally converted to natural gas in most cases, sometimes with a fan, but oftentimes just gravity. And once that heats up, it has thick gauge steel, sometimes they're brick line, and it retains the heat so that the system doesn't have to revolve back on and back off so much. It can actually be more efficient than you know. And so no matter what you see in a basement, let's say th this particular furnace behind us is an early side vent high efficiency furnace. If it's maintained well and cleaned in the spring and fall and checked out for the heat exchange changer and those kinds of things, it can last 20 to 20, 30 years even if you really take care of it and keep the filters clean and all those kinds of things. Always go for the 90 plus efficient, that's important. Now when I come in to a situation like this, I have an older house, older heating system, mm -hmm. I know you talk about getting a, a third party to come in and give you a sense of where to start? It, there are lots of wonderful contractors out there that will give you really good information, but the fact of the matter is, is that it's never a good idea to get the advice from someone who's selling you something. You should always get an independent third party, and oftentimes that can be a mechanical engineer in the community. It might cost you a couple hundred bucks for the inspection and give you the right advice that you need. Maybe they'll tell you that furnace is just great, here's some tweaks, or you need to go ahead and replace. So I'm looking at maybe retrofitting, but right. again, that's, that's a good place to start. Yeah. The old radiators, keep those? Oh, keep the old radiators, they're fantastic. They're cast iron, they retain the heat after the boiler shuts down. And today, and they're architectural as well, but today there are boilers that are as big as a small cardboard box that are 90 plus efficient, that can, that can do a whole two and a half story house without any problem at all. So there's a lot of good ones out there. What other options do I have in terms of heating? Well, you have, you, you have radiant floor heating that you can do. That's where they take this yep. PEX type material and they run it through the floor and, and oh, that's wonderful heat. And that can be very efficient. That can be hooked up to a boiler system. And the other one uh, the, that I like a lot is geothermal, where they go out, if you have a big yard, they make, uh, and make then the they loops. put the loops in like this. Or if you have a small yard like we do in the urban environment where my school is, we drill down and then back up four feet underground to the next one and then we pick up that 52 degree temperature. So I can use that geothermal for my heating, for my cooling, but also other air conditioning. Again, the old houses don't have air conditioning, but right. I can go with a window air conditioner? Win window air conditioners have gotten a lot better than they used to be. They're much more efficient. They're not so beautiful hanging out of a window, but if you do it right, I think they can be uh, a really good system to use. There are other types of air conditioning systems that you can attach to the wall, but you still have to run the pipes and the condensation lines and everything back down to the, to, to the furnace itself where the coil is. Uh, window air conditioners are a great option. Another one would be a small downdraft system in the attic where you get an air handler and a compressor outside and it downdrafts into the second floor and down the staircase. Most old houses have a couple yeah. staircases. And so the temperature variation might be two degrees from the first floor to the second floor, but you don't have to put ductwork downstairs. Or you can just come off of a, a furnace like this and add a coil and put and put air conditioning into the house. Always go over a 13 SEER. That's the electrical rating for efficiency. You want the highest SEER rating, S-E-E-R. So Bob, I, I hear you, you know, again, we can save the, the integrity, the historic integrity of the house, but there's many options, again, to increase that energy efficiency. It's, it's astonishing how many options there are. There's even a system called high velocity, high pressure with ductwork as big as a vacuum cleaner hose that you can fish into a closet without wrecking the look of your old house. There's lots of options. So again, consider that and, and you know, the, you go into that old house, we can maintain that, right? That, yes. That, Keep that, that, that character. That's what, that's what preservation is. Respecting the architecture, but knowing you can't live in a museum. Yeah, I like that. Again, if you'd like to learn more ways to heat your older home, go to our website at Powerhouse TV. We have plenty of how-to projects, videos, and articles that can help get you started.